Uh, can I request everyone to please stand with respect of the reading of God's Word? Our passage for today is found in Isaiah chapter 1, and we are going to read verse 12 all the way to verse 20. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 12 to verse 20. And I would like for everyone to please read out loud with me, beginning with verse 12. It says here, When you come to appear before me, who has required of you this trampling of my courts? Bring no more vain offerings. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and the calling of convocations. I cannot endure iniquity and solemn assembly. Your new moons and your appointed feast, my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your deeds from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Correct oppression. Bring justice to the fatherless. Plead the widow's cause. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be eaten by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you, God, for this time. Thank you, Lord, for your presence here. Thank you, God, for... You are with us and you are for us and you desire to do a greater work in us and through us. Help us, God, to know you more for who you are. And may we worship you wholly and may you obey you fully and may we learn to trust you more completely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may all take your seats. Again, good morning. If you are here for the very first time, so glad you could join us on site. And uh, let's continue to pray. Alam ko maraming barangays on lockdown. And uh, of course, we need to keep our, our city and our nation in prayer. And uh, those of you who jo just joined us online also, so glad you could join us. Perfect timing. We are starting a new series entitled Salt and Light. And as we begin, I would like to explain that this is a church that believes in honoring God and making disciples. That's who we are. That's why we are here. We are here to honor God. That's our motivation, to glorify God, to honor God in everything that we think, say, and do. And we're here also to make disciples, people who are learners, people who are followers of Jesus. And just like what that is all about, okay, we are all learning here. Okay, we are all growing here. Of course, ang idea natin means pagka pastor, ah, dapat nag-aral ka na kasi alam mo ituturo mo na. But, but uh, I just want to let you know that even I myself... I'm still a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm still learning and growing. And together as a church, we are all learning and growing how to honor God more in everything that we do as a church and how to make disciples more effectively. And we are on this lifelong journey of learning how to follow Jesus, how to fellowship with believers, and how to fish for men. And if ever there's a time that you see anyone from church the pastors included, na parang medyo hindi yata honoring kay Lord. Okay? And parang hindi yata characteristic yan of a disciple. Kasi minsan ang idea natin ng disciple, somebody who's very Christ-like. I just want to ask for your apologies. I would like to um, inform everyone that we are a work in progress. Okay, pakitingnan nga yung katabi mo, pakisabihan naman, no? we are all a work in progress. Now, as we talk about being a salt and light, I just want to let you know that this is something that we probably as a church and me personally is something that I really need to learn more. I really need to grow into. In fact, while preparing for this, talagang ang dami kong kailangan i-repent before God. I'm being challenged. I'm being provoked. And itong learning, especially this part, and for the next few weeks that we're going to discuss being a salt and light, um, I'm loving it because I'm learning so much and I'm hating it. Okay? Because I'm realizing that, akala ko ba alam ko na to? How come I'm still need to learn so much more about this? And I'm there's still so much that I still have to unlearn and there's still so much that I have to relearn. 
Di ba parang yung mga estudyante, pagka nag-aaral ka, especially nowadays with all the challenges, you're learning it and you're loving it. Okay, you're learning it because of the free time that you have, but you're hating it because you're not learning as much. Okay, and daming challenges. And uh, you're learning, you're excited, you're loving it when you're learning a lot, di ba? But you're also hating it because when you realize, kala ko ba alam ko na to? I should have known this. How come I'm not seeing this even in my own life? So it's a, like a love-hate relationship. It's a learning. And uh, actually, if you think about Christianity, medyo love-hate relationship din siya. And if you look at our world today, parang medyo ang daming loving and hating. Now, when I talk about hating, uh, I, I, I don't want us to think of people who are so full of hate right now and you're wondering, di ba, where is the love, the love, the love? Di ba, kasi parang puro hate na lang. And of course, we love free speech, but along with that free speech, we have to wrestle with the tension of people who are giving so much hate speech. And pag sinabi natin hate speech, abusive, threatening speech or writing that's uh, prejudiced against a particular group or race or religion or sexual orientation. So, merong love-hate relationship. We love free speech. We want to be able to see, say, and, and, and express what we want to express. Pero we also don't like hate speech because it's enticing violence and hatred towards a particular group, especially pag tayo yung affected ng hate speech. And we're still learning, kaya kailangan lumabas yung mga uh, laws about cyberbullying and many other things. No? Kasi nga, there's so much hate around us. And in fact, if you think about people who have this hate speech, they're very vocal about what they hate, I think if we'll really dig down deep, you'll find out that there are things that they also love and they're passionate about that they can't help but speak against certain things. Now, many of us as Christians, we're probably on this side that we're really, it's all about love and love, 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 puro love, walang hate. I think we're realizing that even Christianity is a love-hate relationship. And, and we need to learn how to love, and listen to this, that we also have to learn at the same time how to hate. Now, Medjo, this is uh, something that has tried to uh, actually change and uh, shifted my mindset because I'm realizing that even in my own life, I need to learn to love God more and more. That He is worthy of my love with all of my heart, with all of my mind, with all of my soul, and with all of our strength. And I think pagka tayo, church tayo, alam natin niya, we need to love God. God deserves our love with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And not only that, we are to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And we are also to uh, even love our enemies even to that extent. But I'm also realizing that it's not enough for us to just love God and love what God loves. I'm realizing now more and more that we also need to learn to hate what God hates. Hindi pwedeng puro love lang, walang hate. In fact, when I think of the Ten Commandments, diba, it's summarized as loving God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and loving your neighbors you love ourselves. But if you think about the Ten Commandments, it's not about what we should do, but it's oftentimes expressed as what we should not do. And of course, we are not to be hate experts, but if you really look at that, the law of God is an expression of His love. But underneath that, the reason why God gave these forbidden things, these, law, these laws that, that reminds us of the things that we should not do, because there are things that God hates, especially if it destroys the love relationship that we have with God and their love relationship that we have, that we should have with people that God loves. So, learning how to love and hate at the same time. Now, I know it's quite challenging and, and, and it's quite a struggle and a journey for me. Pa, talaga, okay, I need to learn how to love and I know God is love, but I'm also starting to realize that there are things that God hates. You know, if you love our spouse, if you love your wife, if you love your marriage, I think we also need to learn to hate the things that can destroy our marriage. If we love our family, I think we also have to be vigilant because there are things that will try to destroy our family. If we love God and our faith is very, very important to us, it's not just enough for us to love God and to love the things that God loves and the things of this kingdom, but if we also love the very things that can ruin that, 
it can really be a struggle. And I realized that even in my own life, kaya siguro maraming Christians din na nagsa-struggle is because not that we, we don't love God, we, many of us love God. Pero yung challenge many times is that we love God, but at the same time, we love sin. The very thing that God hates. And uh, of course, as a Christian, I think this is probably why people stumble over us because we say we love God, but what they see in us and how we live our lives is that, yes, we love God with our lips sa nguso, pero pagdating sa puso, ang nilalove talaga natin are false gods. And, and maybe idolatry or maybe it may not even be a God made of wood or stone, but false gods that we have placed in our own hearts who's taking the very place of God in our lives. Kaya nga sabi ng isa na who could have been a great leader, could have been a great Christian leader. He was a great leader, although not known for his Christianity. Sabi niya, I love Christ. I like Christ. It's the Christians I don't like. Kasi pag tinitingnan niya yung Christians, ang ganda naman ng life ni Christ, ang ganda naman ng teachings niya, but for people who claim to be Christians, so people who say they're Christians, but they don't live it out, it hinders people from seeing God as a good God and seeing God as a great God. It hinders people from seeing the Word of God as good news when the people who preach it and who bring it are actually living out a life that sounds like bad news. So this is a sobering message that as a church, our, our personal faith and our public confession should translate to a public witness. And Christ is reminding us, even in the New Testament, He was reminding the church, God's people, of course today, that we are the salt and light and we should not neglect this responsibility of being a salt and light in Matthew chapter 5 verse 13 to 16 this is what he says you are the salt of the earth and if salt has lost its taste how shall its saltiness be restored it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet you are the light of the world the city set on a hill cannot be hidden nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Can you look at your seatmate and tell your seatmate, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And uh, this is something that we need to be reminded about. That as a church, we are the salt of the earth and the light of of the world, that we should not lose our saltiness, that we should not hide our light, and thank God that uh, we are changed inside, transformed on the inside. We are no longer sinners, but we are now saints of God, and now the challenge is that we are to go and live like Christ. Of course, during the early church, if you think about Christianity, yung mga Christians tong araw persecute many of them are even being killed. But if you think about this, bakit kaya yung mga Christians tong araw, kahit persecute sila, kahit uh, pinapatay sila, kinukulong, pinaparusahan, dumadami. Because these people, they're not just following an empty, um, an empty, you know, faith. They believed in the gospel that has changed their lives and the transforming power of God. And they've seen the work of God in their lives, God's forgiveness, God's grace. And of course, they started to see the power of God and they were performing these many miracles. But at the same time, along with that, because of the things that they did, they were living out their Christian faith. They were being kind even to the things uh, and, and uh, the, to the people that nobody would be kind to. They were taking care of widows and orphans. And, and just to remind you, yung mga orphans noong araw, hindi lang to yung namatayan ng, ano, namatayan ng mga 
uh, fathers and, and, and mothers during the war. But yung mga orphans nung araw, it could be like a, a Roman citizen. Pag may ipinanganak na may defect, iiwanan na lang outside the gates so, so that the, the animals could ravage them. Pero itong mga Christians, believing that every human being was created in the image and likeness of God, would take care of that child and raise them up. That's how Christians were during those times. And, and they would even take care of their enemies and love their enemies. They were being good and kind even to the undeserving. They were hospitable to the foreigners. And, and they were truly loving their neighbors as they love themselves and even loving their enemies. Siguro tulad ng prodig, uh, the parable of the Good Samaritan, there are people who are robbers. They leave the world worse than they found it. And there are the religious hypocrites who will leave the world just like they found it. But there are good Samaritans who would like to leave the world better than they found it. Itong mga Christians nito, they made an impact, not just in the early days of the church, but all throughout history, you will find Christians who would live out their faith, and you will see people who will not just preach the good news, but their faith would translate to good works, because we are God's workmanship, created to do good works that God has prepared in advance for us to do. And you would see in history where Christianity would rise, na merong progress, merong development, whether it's uh, in uh, school, yeah, forming of school, schools, and medical care, and uh, social services, and, and art, culture, philosophy, politics, religion, philanthropy, ethics, business, literature, architecture, human rights, welfare, ending human sacrifices, ending slavery, ending polygamy, and, and abuse of women, and, and many other things. Of course, if you think of... Uh, the times also when Christianity was suppressed or Christians who are very identified as Christians but not living out as a salt and light. Many people stumble and many people run away from Christianity and they don't like the faith and people grow up in Christian faith and ah, that's not what it is because I don't see what I hear. And you see a downward spiral of cities and communities becoming more and more evil and corrupt. So itong message na to, medyo sobering. No, parang salt. We like the healing properties, pero pag may sugat ka at naligo ka sa dagat, it stings. Para tong light. You know, we like light. It sheds light on the things that we do, but if you're so used to being in the dark, it can hurt your eyes. And maybe during this series, may God sting us more so that the healing can come and may God hurt our eyes in such a way that we could see clearly who God is and His heart and we could see ourselves for who we are truly meant to be and see the world the way God sees the world. Nowadays, pag inisip natin yung Christianity, ano kaya yung naiisip ng mga tao? I think of Christianity. Uh, when you think of, of, of you and I, when they think of victory, Ano kayo mga first things that, that comes to their mind? Nakatakot magpa-survey, ano? <laughs> Tarihin kaya natin, ano sabihin, ah, hindi ko kilala yan, ah, hindi ko alam yan, maybe, that's one. Or maybe they would have some things to thank us for. Hopefully, there's some. Pero sana wala masyadong negative. You know, I hope that's not their view of the Christian church, a religious organization with rituals but without relevance. I hope that's not how they see Christianity. You know, uh, rooted in a great past, destined for a great future, but breezing through a not-so-great present. I hope they don't see the church as a community that is so heaven-bound, pero wala nang earthly significance. And as a church that's been here since 1984, yung, yung uh, every uh, victory in the Philippines since 1984, so ilang years na tayo, and uh, tayo in Taft, 25 years in this area. We're being reminded, I'm glad that we are in the church that has uh, adopted this as our mission. We're part of every nation that, that believes that we are to exist to honor, we exist to honor God by establishing Christ-centered, spirit-empowered, socially responsible churches and campus ministries in every nation. We believe that God has called us as a church and as a ministry that's Christ-centered, 
spirit empowered but at the same time socially responsible meron tayong responsibility to our communities sana tayo yung pinaka model citizens wherever we are why because we are not just citizens of this earth but citizens of heaven and if we want God's kingdom to come and His will to be done on earth as it is in heaven, it has to start with us, the kingdom of God in our hearts and in our lives. In fact, that's what the gospel does. It brings transformation on the inside and eventually on the outside. And I thank God that as a church, we are taking this seriously. We're doing things to become socially responsible. We have real life that supports underprivileged young people and, and help them um, graduate. This is our small contribution to see people empowered to lift their families and their future generations out of poverty. Every now and then, of course, on Love the City efforts natin, we, we do uh, uh, relief efforts to help communities who are in need. And, and in fact, uh, just recently, no, nasunugan yung, uh, may nasunugan 250 families in, in Leverisa and uh, Pablo Campo, you know, um, we have people in our church, uh, sila Mig, sila Raymond, they, they established, uh, they put up a tent and, and gave feeding programs and tayo rin as a church, we contributed to that so that we could somehow give relief efforts to, relief goods to people who are affected and, and when you think about this, we should be doing this more and more. Of course, hindi naman natin mamimit lahat ng needs, we cannot fully uh, address every need of society but I I, I I feel like, I believe God is provoking us, God is challenging us, God is steering us up to learn more and more how to do this. Because when God's people fail to do this, when we lose our saltiness, when our lights go dim, our city and our nation will become worse and worse. Sana hindi tayo yung cost nung having more problems in our community. But as God's people, we can make a difference. I like what Billy Graham said, one of the most uh, credible Christian witness during his time, uh, one of the greatest evangelists. This is what he said, we are the Bibles the world is reading. We are the creeds the world is needing. And we are the sermons the world is heeding. You know, a lot of people may not read the Bibles, but if they look at their lives, Sana, what they read is the word becoming flesh through us. And hopefully they will go to the Word of God and know God. You know, there are a lot of people, a lot of causes out there, but I hope our lives will be a creed that is so enticing for people. Because what we're saying basically is that Jesus came to address the greatest need of all. We're dealing with the problems of society at the root, which is in the hearts of men. And only the gospel can change people's hearts. We are the sermons the world is heeding. Sana yung, yung message natin, not just with our lips, but with our very lives, is good news. After all, Jesus came to preach good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, to proclaim freedom to the prisoners, to... Proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And as Christians, we are to continue His ministry and to extend that ministry to others. In the book of Isaiah, the one that we read, God was giving a, a very strong warning to His people, the Israelites, the people of Judah, because uh, they are still okay during this time as a nation, pero yung spirituality nila medyo... And God was giving them a warning. No, judgment is going to come. Of course, this is not just judgment to punish God's people, but, but somehow it's hopefully to remind the people, to, to cause the people to wake up that we cannot go on this course and, and live life as usual apart from God and moving away from the plans and the purposes of God. Because there is a purpose of God for them as a nation. Look at what he said here in verse 12 to 15. When you come to appear before me, who has required of you this trampling of my courts? Did he defile your courts? They're trampling the courts. They're, they're making the courts of God dirty. He said, bring no more vain offerings. Yung offerings pala kay Lord, empty na lang. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and the calling of convocations, I cannot endure iniquity in solemn assembly. Your new moons and your appointed feast, my soul 
hates. This is God speaking to His people through Isaiah. Parang nagrarant si Lord. Okay, out of His love. If you look at the book of Isaiah, it's actually God's loving message for people to return to Him. Sabi niya, they have become a burden to me. I'm weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. And what a very strong reminder for God's people that God hates false religion. And of course, Christianity is a relationship with God, but hopefully that relationship would translate to true religion. James explained it more clearly in chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. Yes, Christianity is about a relationship with God, but hopefully it translates to true religion. We are not saved by what we do. We are saved what, what Christ did. Unlike false religion that if you do this, do that, you'll go to heaven. If you don't do this, you don't do that, you'll go to hell. Christianity, on the other hand, it's that it's been done. Christ did what we could not do. The sinless life that we could not live and died the death that we should have died taking our place so that we can be saved, we can be forgiven, we can be transformed by His grace and by the power of the Holy Spirit. But by the grace of God, He empowers us so that we can do what He has created us to do. And that entails to continue His work, good works that brings a difference in the lives of people. We are not saved by good works, by His good work. We are saved so that we can do good works, which is actually an extension of His work. God wants to work in us and through us. And this is what's very convicting to me. Some of the passages that I, I kind of read quickly kasi nakakonvict ako, na hurt ako. Every time I read this, I realize I'm not doing this as much. Matthew 25, verse 31 to 46. And some of you are familiar with that, with that passage that you know, Jesus was saying, uh, He was commending those those sheep and, and uh, the goats uh, are being rebuked. Kasi nga, sabi niya, you know, I, have, I was hungry, but you fed me. I was naked, you clothed me. I was thirsty, gave me water to drink. And, and sabi niya, when did we do that? You know, what you do to the least. And yung iba nagka-complain, Lord, kailan ka ba namin? Hindi ka naman namin nakita. And sabi niya, what you do to the least is what you do to me. And I realized that yung, yung measurement of how great our Christianity really is, is not what we do to the best of us, but really what we do to the least. Ganun lang pala katindi yung love natin kay God. Akala ko, loving na ako kay Lord kasi I love God's people, I love church. Pero yung, how do I measure if I really love God? How I love the least. Shucks. I have so much to learn. I have so much to grow into. Of course, so among you here feel the tension na, na pressure ka, tutulungan ko ba to? O parang sindikato yata to eh. Am I really helping the person or not? And we wrestle with that. And there's this growing tension in us that, God, I want to be obedient to you, but I also don't want to be taken advantage of. And sometimes, the tendency is natin, we are mobilized and paralyzed. Kasi syempre, paano naman kung scam yan? Paano kung nabudol ka? Or, <laughs> we are living in a world today that it's so hard to do good works. And there are so people who are just dependent on good works. And sometimes they're in the pressure that they're in because they have to learn something. Sometimes helping these people is relieving the pressure and they're not learning what they're supposed to learn. God hates false religion, but He wants us to repent. I hope we're not that kind of people na we will just Breeze that aside when God is telling us to repent. Kaya nga sabi dun sa verse, uh, I think the, there was a skip there in the, in, the, in the verse, that in verse, seven, uh, verse 16, wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, remove the evil of your deeds 
from before your eyes and cease to do evil. One of the things I'm realizing is that God hates evil, injustice, and oppression. God hates evil, God hates injustice, and God hates oppression. Kaya nga sinabi niya doon, wash yourselves, diba? make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your deeds and before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Let's continue in verse 17. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Correct oppression. Bring justice to the fatherless. Plead the widow's cause. That's why Christ did not just come here to feed the hungry. Christ did not just come to, to perform miracles of healing. Christ did not just come to heal the sick and raise the dead. He came here to die on the cross for our sins because the problem is our sin. Every time we go against God, that's when we, we don't know what's right and what is wrong, what is good and what is evil. When we go against God, that a God who is good, then that's, that's evil. That's the opposite of what is good. And the result of evil is injustice. That is, things are no longer in the order or according to the blueprint of how God designed it. So what is very good now becomes not good. And in fact, it continues to get worse and worse and worse. And the people are supposed to do good instead of using the, the authority that God has given us to rule and reign on His behalf. Now we rule and reign for wrong motives. And now we use that power and that role that God has given us to take advantage of others. We are to learn to do good. As disciples, we have to keep learning, God, what's the good thing that you want me to do? Not just know it in our minds, but act on it. We are to seek justice. We are to pursue this. God, bring to order where there is this order. Help me to become a part of what you're doing to restore the order according to how you designed it in our marriages, in our families, in our world, in our cities, in our communities. We are to correct oppression. We are to uh, stop the violence and make it straight. Stop the people who are trying to hurt others, especially the innocent, the robber, the violent. That's what oppression means. We are to bring justice to or defend the fatherless, the orphans. We are to uh, help those who could not help themselves. We are to plead for the widows. To strive, to contend, ang, ang ganda pa ng meaning nun, to, uh, to be outraged in such a way that we are willing to file a case. Hindi ito hate speech ha, na provo- incite natin for rebellion, but if there's anything that I can do legally to address this concern, I want to do it. Wow! What a powerful call for God's people. God hates evil, injustice, and oppression, and He wants us to be transformed. Kasi nga, many times we, we stop with just being saved. We stop with just going to heaven. Pero as a Christian pala, as, as, a, as a church, we have to continue to become instruments of salvation for people. Maybe salvation from their felt needs. Pero sana hindi lang felt needs, but their real deep spiritual need. That we will not just stop with, thank God I'm going to heaven. Sige, Lord, take me now, Lord. Uh, yun na lang pinaka-hope natin. Mag end of the world na sa I will go to God with heaven. Beam me up, Lord. <laughs> Parang Star Trek lang, ano? Pero hindi. Now, while we are here, there's a plan and a purpose for God. His kingdom to come and His will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that plan involves you and I. That plan involves the church. That's why we need to be transformed. And just like the nation during the time of Isaiah, God is calling them to a life that is transformed. Look at this. Come now. Let us reason together. Uh, this is God's invitation to the nation. Akala nyo, okay kayo? Come. Let's talk about this. Let's see what you think and where you are and what God thinks and, and, and where we should be. And ito yung sinabi ni Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are lead like crimson, they shall become like wool. Ito yung heart ni Lord. Even if our sins are so dirty, even if our sins are so obvious and marked, He can make us as white as snow. Interesting fact. If you th- think about a snowflake, it starts with the dirt 
and the process takes place and a snowflake is formed. And when they come together, you see snow and see them as white. And that's what Christians are supposed to be. We are just a speck of dirt. But thank God that by His grace, He can do something and change us and transform us that we can be white as snow. Though our, our sins are red like crimson, they can be white as wool. And, th- and think about this. Ang, yung wool is, is basically a skin, a covering. God wants to cover us with His righteousness. God wants to transform us so that we can be His instrument of transformation to the world. And just like the message to Isaiah, I guess many times we know that. But the question is, will we persist on going this way instead of going God's way? We need to have a life style of repentance. Lord, every time I see something wrong, help me to turn away from it and turn to you and do what's right. Because God hates resistance and rebellion. Look at this in verse 19. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Verse 20. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be eaten by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. God was reminding the nation that time, if you will continue this way, if you will keep refusing God's direction, God's wisdom, God's guidance, you want to have a life apart from God, God is saying, I will let you do that. You will have it your way. And when you have it your way, things are not going to be good for you. But look at what verse 19 says, if you are willing and obedient, Yun naman yung will ni Lord eh. It's good, pleasing, and perfect. But if we, we are willing, binigyan tayo ni Lord ng free will so that we can be that kind of a people. Of course, many times we choose the wrong things. But if we can choose God and say, God, I'll trust you enough. You know what's best for me. You know what is good. You know what is pleasing. You know what is perfect. Because you're God, I'm not. I'm not gonna be the God of my own life. I'm not gonna make myself or anyone or anything to become the God of my life. You are the Lord. I would like for you to take charge. I will willingly and voluntarily submit to you. He promised that you will eat the good of the land. Of course, the warning is that if you refuse and rebel, make consequence. God hates resistance and rebellion. But with willful obedience, we are blessed to become a blessing. You know, a sad note, we're just in chapter 1, and we're going to have a, a whole series on Isaiah for the next several weeks as we talk about salt and light. We're going to look at the book of Isaiah. But on a sad note, 66 chapters pa yung, yung Isaiah. And eventually in chapter 39, they were brought to exile because they continued to refuse God's will. They continued to rebel against God. Of course, there's temporary judgment. It's more to refine God's people. God's judgment is never the final word. And I hope hindi natin patagalin yung judgment and uh, whatever struggles that we are in because of our sins, because of our disobedience, because we forget God. But when we quickly repent, we quickly return to Him. His grace is always there. He's ready to forgive. He's ready to cleanse us and purify us from all un righteousness. Of course, we cannot do this on our own. We really need the help of God and the grace of God. Remember the story of Israel? Grabe ni ginawa ni Lord. 400 years of slavery in Egypt. They cried out to God. God heard them. God rescued them. Ten plagues. God made war against their false gods. Took them out of Egypt. Parted the Red Sea. Brought them to the wilderness. But for 40 years, they stayed there. Because in spite of all the miracles that God did, they still wanted to go back to Egypt. God took them out of Egypt, pero yung Egypt remained in their hearts. So God had to wait for a new generation that would rise up. And none in the previous generation except for Caleb and Joshua, who had a different spirit, was able to enter the promised land. Ang galing din ng ginawa ni Lord during the time of Joshua. 
wow, amazing times. You know, God led them victory after victory. They were able to conquer the land. They were able to eat the good of the land. Hindi lang yung miraculous provision ni Lord from, from uh, in the wilderness. Manna, bread from heaven, water from the rock. When they entered the promised land, wow. Ibang klase yung, ano, yung grapes talagang ang lalaki. Kasi nga, grabe, it's a promised land. Land flowing with milk and honey as a description. And during the time of Joshua, they faithfully served God and the elders of the, of the land served God throughout their lifetime. But when prosperity and success happens, ano nangyari? Nakalimutan na naman si God. A generation rise up and forgets God. Judges happen. God allowed judgment to take place and different nations would conquer them. And then when they cry out to God, Lord save us, God would raise up a judge who would restore God's order and save them. Pero even tulad ng mga judge and ng nation, pag okay na naman, kalimutan na naman si God, judgment would again take place. And one after another, every time we forget God, bad things happen to us. The problem is in our heart. We have hard hearts. Our spirits are not steadfast. Yun yung prayer ni David, Lord, create in me a pure heart and renew a steadfast spirit. Thank God that with Christ came, we have a better covenant. Why? Because this Savior did not just come to bring in an earthly kingdom and a political kingdom. He brought in a kingdom that would transform us inside out. He has given us a brand new heart, the old is gone, and the new has come. And has given us a brand new spirit so that we can be empowered to know God's will and have the grace to do God's will. And if you will just allow God, I know it stinks, but Lord, heal my heart. God, I know what you're saying, what you're showing me is, is hurtful to my eyes, God, when I see how far I am from who you've called me to be. But God, the more I walk with you, the more I fellowship with you, the more I walk in the light, the more you will expose whatever darkness that's in my heart. It's so easy for us to say, ah, grabe naman siya, napaka-prejudice, napaka-racist. Pero question, baka hindi natin alam tayo rin may prejudice and racism in our hearts. We look at people and say, wow, napaka-hateful naman niya, napaka-unloving naman niya. But for all we know, baka tayo rin in our hearts. There are still people that we cannot forgive. There are still people that we cannot truly love. Now, as we start this series, I pray that as a church, and we're going to discuss this more week by week, may we truly be a salt and light of the earth. Of course, this, this saltiness and this light is not inherent in us. Jesus is the true light of the world. And if we allow Him to live in us, the more His light will shine. Para lang tayong lamp na maybe cloudy yung, yung glass. And hopefully we allow God to clean us more and more. Pwede tayong salt that may have lost its saltiness, pero we ask God to transform us on the inside out so that we can be who we are truly meant to be. Can we just bow our heads right now as we pray? And Lord, we ask you. Lord, to forgive us for the times that we are not becoming who we are truly meant to be. I pray, God, that you would help us to see things more clearly. To see ourselves the way you see us. And thank you, God, although our sins are red as scarlet, Lord, though our, our sins are as, as red as crimson, you want to make us white as snow. So today, God, we repent. We turn away from our sins and we return to you. Wash us, Lord. Clean us. Cover us by the blood of the Lamb. 
cleanse us by the power of your spirit. And give us the strength, Lord, to cease and to stop doing evil. To learn to do good. To seek justice. To pursue the right things that we need to pursue. Lord God, that we would correct oppression, that we would bring justice to those who could not put their lives into order. Lord, that we would plead the widows cause, the helpless, that we would help them as well. Lord, don't leave us, God, blinded. Lord, I pray, God, allow us to see you more clearly and to see the opportunities that you are bringing into our lives and that we would have the courage and the strength to trust you and to obey you whenever you are called upon to act on something. Thank you, Jesus, that you are transforming us inside out and that you are also using us, Lord, so that we can be an instrument of transformation that you are bringing into our world today. Lord, even in the midst of this pandemic, Lord, while many people are still realizing that we need you, that we cannot go through this and, and do this on our own apart from you, Lord, I pray more and more, may we become a salt that will become your healing agents into the world that we are in. May we truly be a light, Lord God, that can shine so bright, your light shining through us so that more people can know you and more people can come to a relationship with you. Lord, that we would be a people who doesn't just have false religion, that we would be a people who believe in the one true God and that it is seen not just in the what we believe that we are proclaiming, but let it also be seen in the way we live our lives. Can we just all stand right now? I would like to dismiss us with a prayer and with a blessing. But a reminder, we are blessed to be a blessing. I want to dismiss us with a challenge and, and I want to say this, that I am also challenging myself in this. Okay, we're all learning in this process. You know, Christ is our advocate. Okay? Uh, he became our advocate. He rep he's the perfect God-man. He represents God to us. And He represents man to God. Uh, way the truth in the life. Now we can be reconciled back to God. But can we just pray as a people that we would also be an advocate? That more and more during this week, we would be a people who would represent God to other people and through our prayers we would represent the people to God and I would like to challenge us maybe it's time for us as a people to start praying Lord what part of the world today that you would like for me to have a small contribution ano ba yung gusto mong uh, maging advocacy ko Lord in my life for some of you maybe you're a business person you're, you're believing God I want like for you to prosper me because I want to help more people find jobs and uh, help me to do my business in such a way na, na pwedeng model yung how to really take care of employees and how to be a business that will really prosper so that I can be a blessing to the community if you're in the arts and media maybe you start praying Lord ano ba maging role ko in the arts and media Lord instead of bringing disunity and immorality spreading it through social media Lord help me to become an instrument that I can unite more people and unite unite people to you and, and become an instrument so that more and more can be reminded of the morality of what is right and the fake news and the lies but truth you know I, I don't know how that looks like for you maybe for for um, an educator God help me to to teach people uh, grow in leadership and grow in wisdom if you're a doctor help me God to do make a difference in the medical field and, and taking care of the sick and be a, an instrument of healing to the world and, and bring developments and innovations so that more and more people will be blessed not for my glory not for the glory of my own wisdom but for your glory 
If you are in, in the family, help me to to bring families closer and stronger and marriages stronger and parents and children being united and and maybe help the elderly and and the the kids who may not have homes. But I want to start opening my home so that people, kahit hindi naman literally adapted, if God will call you to adapt, praise God for that. But maybe I, I want to help people who don't have a home or coming from broken homes experience what real family is like. And maybe some of you, God is calling you to government bring peace and order in our nation. Whatever that is, it can start by praying. Say, Lord, give me that advocacy. Guide me, lead me. How can I make a difference in my own small way? And I want to challenge us uh, on a more practical sense. So it starts with praying. But for this week, I would like for us to start acting on it. Think of someone who is probably least deserving someone who cannot repay us back. Think of doing a kind deed to that person. And as I pray, maybe God will remind you, maybe as I'm speaking, God will, is already reminding you of someone, you know, reminding you of a person that you could start blessing. It may start simple, maybe giving something that you're not using at home, or maybe treating that person for a meal, but don't just do this acts of random kindness if you could pray for that person and if the opportunity we could be a salt and light start a conversation ask them questions get to know them more listen to them and then eventually tell your story and tell the greatest story of all the gospel and who knows what kind of difference we can make in these people one life at a time Let's just lift up our hands before God. Lord, as you are blessing us, may you send us out so that we could be a blessing. As you are transforming us on the inside, help us, Lord, to become an instrument of transformation to a world out there that's in need of the good news and who needs to see that you are very much alive that you are very much at work through your people and that you are great and that you are good. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord give you peace and become an instrument of peace so that nothing is missing and nothing is broken. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless.